RTCFM.com. We're on RTC Channel 4 and also streaming live on Channel 5. And of course, your TuneIn Radio app takes us wherever we happen to be going and wherever you happen to be going. And yesterday was a board meeting for the Woodlawn Hospital Board of Trustees, correct, John Allen? Absolutely. Okay. And of course, uh, the board meeting went uh, very expeditiously. It was, it was a nice short meeting yesterday. Usually, the, the first few months of the year, there's not a whole lot going on, okay. so we stretched to try to find things to discuss. Uh, but there were some you know, pretty important items that uh, the board, uh, we get them involved with as we move forward. And if we're changing some policies or procedures, and one of the things that uh, we're looking to now is, in 2014, as we, you and I have discussed many times, fairly bad year as far as, as we're looking at our bad debt. And again, the bad debt, we identify those as those patients who have the ability to pay, but not the desire. And it was almost six million dollars last year. So, you know, that is a, a large number for a facility of our size. So, working with the board and looking at what's going around other hospitals, other healthcare providers in our area, on March 1st, we're going to kind of start the, you know, what's called an upfront collection process. And it's a, it's a little bit of a misnomer. It, it doesn't mean that if you come in for emergency services, you've got to hand us money prior to being seen. What we'd like to do, though, is be able to identify what is your portion of your bill going to be. So if you're coming in for an x-ray and we know that's pre-scheduled and it's an elective service, we'll get on your insurance company's website and we, by getting your information, we can gather what's your deductible, what's your copay. And what we'd like to do is for you to you know, help us out and pay that you know, at that point. It saves billing costs and what we found that as that goes on, if all of a sudden it's 30 days, 60 days, all of a sudden out of sight, out of mind, and lots of times folks just you know forget to pay their bill or choose not to. So that's gonna be our major point that we're looking at next year is how can we reduce our bad debt expense? Uh, I'm compared to hospitals in our area, and I get a report that comes from the Indiana Hospital Association that was called my peer group, and I pick what hospitals I want. So there's about six hospitals right around us that in for 2014, Four point, the average was 4.3% of their total charges went to bad debt. Ours was 5.3. Okay. Now you think, you know, 1%, that's not that big a difference, but if ours would have been 4.3 instead of 5.3, that made a million dollar difference. So it is a large number that we're looking at, it, and how can we, you know, reduce that? Part of what we found is causing it, again, as we've discussed before, is with some of the new health insurance plans, the deductibles that people now have on their plans that might have been $500 or $1,000 are now $7,500. It's very difficult for them to you know, pay those deductibles. So all we're asking is, you know, help us out here. If you can pay, you know, help us with that. If you have difficulties, we have all kinds of resources that we got financial counselors more than happy to sit down with you and say, how can we help you with your bill? Either you know, uh, spread it out over payments, or is there assistance programs that we're aware of that you might not know about that you qualify for? So it, there's a lot going on. We're trying to really work with the folks the best we can, but could be one of our focuses this year is can we reduce that bad debt? You know, I've kind of set a goal for all of our uh, business office folks is I want to be at that 4.3% when we close out 2015. So we'll just see how that goes, but that's one of our goals that we're looking to. Excellent. And, you know, there's been a lot of... Uh, I think conversations, lack of better in the community. You know, what well, we hear you don't take Medicare. We hear you don't take Medicaid. Absolutely, we take Medicare, we take Medicaid. In fact, we probably take 99% of all of the insurance that is in this area. We're a provider for that. Now, there are a couple plans that we've tried to get into, but they're kind of a closely held plan, and that group says, you know, no, we don't want Woodlawn Hospital in our group. And, one of them I can understand that uh, there's a, a group out of the Plymouth area where it's kind of the Plymouth physicians own that group. I can understand why they might want us not to be a participant in their plan. So we're not in that plan, but we've tried and tried, you know, to get in there and they just say, no, we really don't want you in our plan. So that's one of the few ones we're not in. So we do take all the insurance and as we're looking at the new HIP2 program coming out, all the different plans coming through that, we're a provider for that also. So. Uh, you know, there's not too many plans, I guess, that we're not participating in. So, yeah, if uh, you know, if you hear we don't take that insurance or Medicare, Medicaid, we absolutely do. Check it out. Just check it out. Check Give it us out. a call right. and let us know exactly. your thoughts or your concerns. You know, and the when we look again, longevity of a healthcare organization, whether it's Woodlawn Hospital or any hospital, 
the bad debt is probably the biggest area for them that if they can control that half percent, one percent, that's a big number and uh, it really makes a difference to their longevity. You know, whatever those funds are that goes to the bottom line, we just turn those right back into, reinvest them back into the facility for new services and new programs that meet the needs of our community. Excellent. Uh, the other thing I've been getting a few phone calls on, there was a, a newscast probably a week ago now about some uh, deaths in the California area due to right. infections from some scopes. So, uh, you know, I'm not a clinician, so first thing I do, I call my folks and say, okay, one, do we have those scopes? And two, how do we clean them? Uh, so no, we do not. Those were some specialized scopes that, you know, it's not a procedure that we do at Woodlawn Hospital. But, you know, still prompted that question, do we meet or exceed the manufacturer's suggestion for the cleaning of the scopes we use? And I, can, you know, went back, talked to the girls in the area that do that, and we do. We see whatever the manufacturer recommends, and they actually go two extra cycles over and above what the manufacturer recommends. So I feel very confident now to be able to say, you know, we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that any equipment that's used in the hospital on an invasive procedure, it meets high standards as far as being clean and sterile. So it, uh, you know, it was one of those, I can understand some concerns when you see the newscast. You know, uh, it, they were fairly generic in that newscast and didn't really say that these were specialized scopes and that are hard to clean. Okay. Once we got kind of past those two items, we went right into the you know the financial report for the month. Uh, for January, we had gross revenue of 9.1 million. Our deductions from revenue was about 5.6 million, so left us about 3.5 million that we could work with for the year. Um, operating expenses about 4.2 million, so we did post a $270,000 loss, you know, for the month of January. But again, I go back and I, I know I harp on it a lot, but our bad debt for January was $696,000. So as you can That's see- That's a big chunk of that, that isn't that it? That is a big chunk of that. So if, again, if we could just reduce that, that would help us make sure that we maintain a positive bottom line so we have the resources to reinvest back into the hospital and into the community. Okay. And that was kind of the board meeting. Again, okay. fairly short board meeting, not a lot going on at this time of year. January, February, kind of slow months. I know particularly last year they were very slow due to the weather. They were, uh, yes, last, the first quarter last year was devastating for us. And uh, January was picked up a little bit when we look at our volumes from last year to this year, substantially increase in volumes. And February is just, uh, you, I hate to say it, but we're at capacity. Uh, we have a lot of sick folks in the community right now. And there's not, you know, everybody says, oh, it must be the flu. No, it's not. It's a wide variety of different okay. illnesses. And I think uh, yesterday we only had one available bed left in the hospital. So we're fairly full and have been for quite a few weeks. So, you know, from my perspective, you know, that's kind of a good thing because that helps generate the revenue. But, it, you know, it puts a burden on the, the families and stuff because we do have some folks who've been in the hospital. And we're seeing them now. They're three, four, five days in there. So they're really sick individuals that are in right now. But not any one thing we can put our finger on and say, here's you know, the primary cause. It's a, kind of a smorgasbord of different things going on right now. John Alley is president, CEO, Woodlawn Hospital, bringing us up to date on the Board of Trustees meeting that was yesterday for the hospital. John, as we look ahead to the future and the month of March and different things uh, down the line, I know we're going to continue to work on getting the bad debts taken care of as best we can. We're starting some training. In fact, it's uh, probably going on right now with some of our frontline folks. So when you do come in, they're going to be able to intelligently con have a conversation saying, here's why we're doing this, here's what we'd like to do, and we're looking for the, for the help. I mean, we need cooperation from our patients, too. And I know some people, uh, I've gotten some angry phone calls, they've heard about this, and, you know, how dare I, you know, want you to, me to pay for my service. But I kind of go back, we're probably the only service organization that anybody uses, you don't pay for it, point of service. You go to the grocery store, you go to, you know, put fuel in your vehicle. Right. You pay for it at that point in time. We're to that point now, we have the technology that we can get you pretty well what you're going to owe at that visit. Why is it not something that you'd be willing to do and say, hey, you know, but we're higher cost. So we, we've got plans, programs to help with that, but we're just really asking for the help from the community. Let us get that bad debt down to a, a reasonable number so that we can continue to, you know, improve the system, improve the facility. Well, I think that's the point. You know, Woodline being a nonprofit hospital, 
County Hospital at the same time, you need profitable revenues so that you can continue to develop in terms of technology and, and uh, in terms of health care. Correct. And, you know, we, we work very hard at bringing what technology we need for this community. We don't go out and just buy stuff because it's the newest and the latest. We, we really analyze anything we look at and say, okay, if we're going to bring this, you know, new piece of equipment in, is it going to service and do what we need to do for our community and for the patients we see? And then the, the staff, and I they've worked very hard and, and we're at the process now of looking at a new MRI which is a, a integral piece of technology that we have to have in the healthcare industry. Ours is uh, five six years old so the technology is not quite there right now so what we're looking at is what's called a short bore wide bore silent MRI. Big name but what that means is for those who are slightly claustrophobic that tube that you go in is a little wider and a little shorter so you don't get that sensation of being kind of in a tunnel plus some of that technology if you've had an MRI it's noisy a lot of banging and clanging going with this new technology it's very silent so what I charged uh, Greg Dakota with who is the director of that area says look to get a replacement but I don't want to spend any more for it than what I'm paying now now we couldn't get you know an exact pass through because it's a, it's a piece of equipment that we lease but when we look at the incremental cost, that uh, monthly fee for that lease payment, it's just slightly more than what we're paying now. So he did an excellent job going back to the manufacturer and saying, no, we need to have a better deal, better deal. And I think he made three or four trips to him, but we got it down so it's about a half percent, maybe one percent difference in monthly payment, but we're getting a world of difference in technology. And I think we're going to be the third hospital in the state of Indiana to have that technology but I got it for you know the same cash flow that I had before so that's the type of things that you know the staff out there they're very conscious of cost control and we're a cost reimbursed hospital but that doesn't mean we need to be crazy and just waste our money so we still operate very con conscious of controlling cost. When will we be getting that MRI? We're hoping by uh, sometime April, May. Okay. Um, what happens once that was ordered then they start actually building it and it's a it's kind of unique it comes inside a building so uh, the current one, they brought it in on the back of a truck, a crane, put it in place. They'll come in, pick up the current building that's out there, and set the new building in and, and hook everything up. So it, uh, it's kind of fun to watch them do that because it's just, uh, I was amazed when they brought the current one in. I was watching that process, and there was a guy laying on the concrete pad underneath it <laughs> as they're lowering it. And he'd get on the radio and say, okay, you need to move it a quarter inch north, and the crane operator was able to move that so it would sit down over the the guiding post that's there. So it's uh, skilled technicians put I that thing that's in. That's true. Does the old one have to be dismantled first? No. What they'll do basically come in. Uh, we'll unhook it from the building that it's in because right now it's hooked okay. up to the hospital, and they'll strap it and pick it up <laughs> and, and put it on a flatbed truck and drive it back to Wisconsin. So it's uh, it's just kind of unusual when you look at we've come that far from the technology that we can get a a whole room basically comes in on the back of a truck and they just set it in place. John Alley, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, bring us up to date on all the hospital activities. Anything else you'd like to pass along, John? Just, uh, you know, as we start looking to this spring springtime, uh, remember the roads are slick. Uh, we've, you know, we've seen, seen some folks this morning where, you know, the roads maybe thawed yesterday, but last night and early this morning, all of a sudden there were some icy patches. So just be aware, we don't want to meet you by accident. You know, there have been a lot of folks who have fallen down this winter. We've seen a lot of falls. Right. And uh, I think it's just because it's been kind of an unusual, we haven't had a lot of just consistent cold. It'd warm up, stuff would kind of puddle up, and then at night it freezes. Well, the next morning, you know, you're running late for work, you've got the coffee in one hand, and all of a sudden you find that ice patch out in the driveway. So just be careful. Uh, again, we, we don't mind seeing you, but we just do not see you by accident. John Alley, well said. Thank you very much for being here today. We thank appreciate you. your time. Oh, and Scott, I meant to thank you for being here as well, too. It's a pleasure, always. Thank you, guys. Thank you, John.